Hello, the title of this video is how to make a real world post request using GraphQL as the query language. What I'm going to do is first I'm going to show you the curl example. Now, if you're familiar with curl, you supply URL and then some header options. So I'm supplying content type, application JSON, accept application JSON. Here is the URL. Now, this URL is a URL to a demo for Netbox, which is um, primarily IP address management program, but it doesn't really matter. This is just the example. So you can apply this concept to any query you want to make using Python with GraphQL as your query language. I'm just going to run it and then we'll talk about why it's useful. So there we go. Boom. And we've gone off and we've got some data, some names, circuit IDs, providers. Um, this is all dummy information, which is, I gather it's due to be reset at midnight each night on the Netbox website. So that's the curl request. Um, now, where did I get that from? I got that from docs.netbox.dev. And I went to the, let me just zoom in on that a little bit. I went to the GraphQL API documentation. And in there, they supplied this. Now, this example won't work by itself because you need to supply an API token, which you can get. Oh, yes, I did admin and admin. Then I signed in. Once you've signed in, then you get the link to, how is this responding? Let me just refresh. Here we go, API tokens. And there we go. Sorry about the delay. Okay, so that one's been disabled. I don't know why, it doesn't matter. So I've been using this one. And just do copy. It'll copy it to your clipboard. There's multiple tokens. As I say, this gets reset at midnight. So demo.netbox.dev forward slash user forward slash API dash tokens. But make sure you log in with admin and admin. Good. Right. So what I then did was I, I don't need that link. I found a site to convert my curl request to, you could, that was rec bin, which I didn't use in the end. I used this one, convert curl to Python. So I just supplied um, what you saw on here. So we take all of this, copy it, paste in there, except edit this. So you need to supply the token and edit the URL. So the URL needs to be HTTPS demo.netbox.dev.graphql. Now, so all this is specific to graph to netbox. Um, but here we go. Here's the code. So you've seen me run the code in curl in terminal. And this is Exactly the same as what I've ju you just saw, other than I've added pretty print there and there, and I'm printing the response content. So what we're doing is actually supplying a query. We're pl supplying a query as our JSON data. And why are we doing that? We're doing it because we are using GraphQL. GraphQL, you build up the queries in curly braces. I'm going to do a full video uh, in a few days where I've used Strawberry. Strawberry is a Python framework for working with GraphQL. But for now, I'm just going to stick to the GraphQL documentation. And here you can see you just need to keep supplying uh, basically the keys. You supply the keys and then you get back the values. And it is that simple. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what we're doing here is we're doing the queries. We're not actually building the API as such. Um, that will be a job for another day where we actually build the schema and the resolvers. So 
here, queries and mutations are basically a bit like, um, if you're thinking in terms of CRUD, a query is create, update. No, a query is just, uh, sorry, read. A mutation is um, create, update, and delete. Um, so let's, without further ado, let's actually run this code. Uh, that's just going to clear it from here and run it. Takes a while, but here you see you get back. You get back um, data which would otherwise have taken two API calls because circuit list would have come from one API and provider name would have come from a separate API. Here we've basically done two queries from two APIs in a traditional fashion. So uh, hopefully that's explained it, but really you need to get your hands dirty. So uh, the things you need to do are get the documentation, get an API key, put the two together, create your curl request <laughs> or your curl command, and then you can, here we've got all sorts, uh, but you can change it to Python here with the tab. And those are comments, those bottom four lines. But um, what it's done is actually, I was scratching my head for a while, just wondering how to construct it. But these are the three, well, this is the magic bit. Query, colon, query. So this bit here, really matches what you will see. If you start testing and working with GraphQL, um, you will get Graph IQL here. This is, um, it's basically a, a, it's a place where you can test your queries. And um, I've pasted all of that in, which I didn't want to do, but if we just strip all that out, you see your query, um, so everything starts and ends with the curly braces. And what we don't want is any of that. In fact, let's try that. There we go. So uh, I'll just format that a bit nicer. Prettify. There we go. Um, so let's un can we unprettify that? No, we can't. <laughs> Once you've prettified it, you, you're stuck. Um, but basically, that is the that's the prettified version of what's actually here in one line. So we've got two queries. So in fact, neither query exists when you're running it in the GraphQL. The query and the query are actually specific to the JSON data, which you supply to requests. So you actually only need these inner bits. Uh, in fact, that, so that bit there, which is highlighted, um, is actually um, so circuit list your status and active and then you've got CID these are two separate tables I believe and the benefit of using uh, the benefit of using GraphQL enables a client to specify an arbitrary nested list of fields to include in the response all queries are made to the root forward slash GraphQL API endpoint. For example, to return a circuit ID and provide a name of each circuit with an active status, you can issue a request such as the following. The response will include the requested data formatted as JSON. Um, it doesn't say here, but there's a very good video on Amazon, on YouTube, which shows an AWS presentation where he runs um, the two queries that he needs to get the data or the three queries that he needs, runs it, it takes about three seconds. When he just combines the two queries in a GraphQL query, it takes half a second. So traditional, three seconds, GraphQL, half a second. So if you're running a website or an app, it's obviously these things are almost critical. So um, I'm going to be doing a video, as I say, with Strawberry. Strawberry.rocks is the website if you want to go ahead and look at it. Um, I'd not heard of it until recently. Shame on me. But um, yeah, GraphQL 
And there's other libraries. So Netbox provides a read-only GraphQL API to complement its REST API. This API is powered by the Graphene library and Graphene-Django. Um, so this is all read-only. So it's only really using query. Um, if you want to make mutations and edit data, then um, there's no point trying to do it with the Netbox API. But there obviously will be other uh, sandbox environments out there where you can test it or you could be more advanced and try and write your own API that works with GraphQL. So I'm still learning this, but I just wanted to show you, um, I wanted to show you GraphQL being used inside Python with requests using post. So thanks for watching. Um, see you next time.